1896, the first ever Olympic Games were played in Athens, Greece, where a total of nine sports were played. But this did not remain the case, as some other sports were getting added to the roster and others were getting dropped. To date, athletics, swimming, fencing, gymnastics and cycling are the only sports to be played in every edition since the competition's inception. Now, sports like auto racing and cricket were once in the Olympics but do not feature anymore. But let's focus on the present. In this year's Olympics in Tokyo, Japan, 33 sports will be played. That's a record high. Surfing, skateboarding, sport climbing, and karate will be making the Olympics debut. Baseball and softball will be making a comeback to the Olympics. I know. The demotion and promotion of sports into and out of the Olympics may seem confusing, but worry not, because I'm going to demystify what makes an Olympic sport. The body that is in charge of adding and dropping sports in the Olympics is called the International Olympic Committee, the IOC. And for a sport to get an audience to this committee, it has to be represented by an international federation. And for this international federation to be recognized by the IOC, it has to ensure that it has practices, statues, and activities that are in line with the Olympic Charter. It also has to ensure that the athletes within its ambit are tested following the World Anti-Doping Code. Once all this is set, the ball is now on the Sports Federation Scott to convince the IOC to add the sport to the Olympic program. This is what we call lobbying. Lobbying for a sport includes filing a petition to the IOC. Now, before they file this petition, this international federation has to ensure that the sport it represents ticks some of these boxes. This is the first box to be ticked. For a sport to be played in the Olympics, it has to be played in different geographical regions worldwide. For a men's sport specifically, it should be played in at least 75 countries across four continents. And for a women's sport to be played in the Olympics, it should be played in at least 40 countries across three continents. The second box to be ticked is that the sport should have considerable interest from the media and the public, especially among young fans worldwide. This is because it has to attract sponsorship and also for the sports broadcasting prospects. Skateboarding, the new inclusion in this year's Olympics, ticked this particular box because of its appeal to the millennials. Third box to be ticked is that the sport should not be expensive to implement in the Olympics. This is because every host country has a budget to work with. Now, if a sport has a facility that is costly to implement, it may work against their lobby to the IOC. Take, for instance, cricket. For a host country to have cricket in the Olympics, it has to build one entire stadium dedicated to cricket as compared to a football stadium that can host other track events. Among many different reasons, this is why cricket is no longer in the Olympics. The fourth box to be ticked is that the sport should not be motor powered. Even though the IOC revised the law against the inclusion of motor powered sports, it still remains an unspoken rule against these sports. The age old debate of whether drivers are athletes is why auto racing is no longer in the Olympics. What is more, Olympic Games focuses more on the athletes' prowess than the machines. There you have it, folks. If you have been wondering why your favorite childhood sport is not in the Olympics, perhaps you need to check if it ticks all these boxes. And if it does, you can only hope that the lobby is successful. Let us meet here next week again for yet another dose off the road to Tokyo.